Hey guys, welcome to Get In The Mix. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the SoundSwitch lighting control system and the SoundSwitch Micro DMX interface. Now, what is SoundSwitch? SoundSwitch is a lighting control system that's designed to work in conjunction with your DJ software. It works with Virtual DJ, it works with Serato, it works with Traktor, it works with Ableton, and in fact, any software with the Ableton Link protocol. Now, what it does, it designs and controls light shows for you based off the music that you play. It takes things like beat grids and transients and uses this information to auto-analyze and create a show for you. And then that show plays in time with your music. When a beat hits, the light flashes. When you bring down a volume fader, the lights come down. It's a really great way to integrate your lights with your music and get the most possible from the least possible effort. Here, long story short. Today's video, we're gonna split it into three little sections, just to give a little overview of what SoundSwitch is, which I've done in part there. We're gonna dive into the software and just take a little look at how easy it is to set up your lights with the SoundSwitch DMX. And then we're gonna just run a little de uh, demonstration and we'll let the lights just kind of give you a, a basic idea of how it runs. I've already explained what SoundSwitch is, but it's more than just an automatic kind of analyst software. It can also be used to program your lights. So you can really dive in as far into it as you like. You can use it to just auto analyze all your tracks and have it write the shows for you and do them for you. On the flip side, you can dive right in and program on a fixture by fixture basis exactly what you like, what you want your lights to do inside of your tracks. And you can create what are called static cues, which can be used uh, in, in situations where you might not need to play a track, where you might just need to put your up lighters up for the wedding, wedding speeches, or you might need to uh, highlight a spot on someone for a speech. Uh, it allows you to run those kind of static cues, if you will. And last but not least, it runs a thing called auto loops, which are almost like a generalized, pre-programmed light show that can be attached to any song. Uh, and so you don't have to have analyzed everything. You can bring some tracks in where it might not have been analyzed and away it goes. The first thing to explain will be what it is you get when you buy a DMX interface. So this is the box that the interface comes in. Inside there, you get this very handy little DMX interface. It runs very strictly from this USB here to this male XLR connection here ready for your DMX cable to just slot in there. Now these are priced at $28.99 and included with that for that price, you get three months subscription to SoundSwitch. Now the new payment model for SoundSwitch is based on a subscription program whereby you pay £7.50 a month and then you get the soft proprietary to the software as long as, you, as long as you keep paying. Now £7.50 isn't much. You know, if you're doing four or five mobile gigs a month and charging two to three hundred pound a gig, seven pound fifty a month to have all your lights running at their, the best they can be is a very small price to pay. People may have seen before we did a video on the RB DMX1, which is Pioneer's answer to SoundSwitch. But of course that only works with Rekordbox. So for all you guys out there that use any of the other uh, DJ softwares, SoundSwitch is the answer. Now I think now we have a look at the software and we'll just quickly dive in and look at how to set up some fixtures and how the software runs. So what I'll do is I'll actually, we'll leave, we'll leave that plugged in and I'll open up what's called a new venue. So when you open up SoundSwitch, you'll be greeted with a blank venue. You will need to DMX your, your addresses on your lights and program that into the software. So to do that, we simply click on this DMX button up here and we're presented with a DMX universe map. Now, in a DMX universe, you get 512 channels and you get up to two universes with SoundSwitch. So it's really great. You've got access to a lot of uh, channels, which means you can run anything from very small to particularly large shows. You know, really 512 channels is all that most people will need. But with this, you're getting, you know, 1,024 channels. That's a lot of channels to work with. I couldn't imagine any mobile guys, anyone from anywhere but a big club being able to fill that universe up. So the first thing you need to do is add a fixture in. So we've got here along the bottom a manufacturer's list and we've got to the uh, right of that a fixture library. 
Now, it's got a really handy feature whereby, of course, you can click on a, uh, a manufacturer and you can search in that manufacturer and go through the list, but they've now added a nice all manufacturers button. You click on that and you can just simply search your name. So what lights we've got here, we've got a couple of Equinox Fusion Spot Mark IIs and a couple of LEDJ Slimline 5Q5 RGBWs. So let's first add an Equinox. Oh, I don't need to type Equinox because we're already searching all manufacturers. I've got to search for the Fusion Spot. And we can see right there, Fusion Spot in 10 channel mode. All I've got to do is click and drag it to the corresponding address. Now I've got this fixture here addressed up to uh, number one. So we're going to put that onto number one and you can see that that light in turn reacted to that. I'm going to add another one to channel 11 because the other light over here is programmed on channel 11. I'm then going to search for my slim line. So slim line 5Q5 RGBW and today I'm going to be using that in four channel mode. I believe it's on channel 22, yep, that popped up nicely, and I believe the third one is on channel 33. Now, if you're looking at lighting control, we're gonna presume you know how to DMX address all your fixtures. If you don't, there's plenty of handy videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. Also, as always, I've said it many a time and I'll say it many times again, read the manual, because it will tell you in there exactly how to do. All you wanna make sure is that your lights are on an address number that isn't occupied by another light, that the channel mode on your light matches the channel mode that you select inside the software, and that your lights are all set to slave. That's a key part of any DMX control system is that they need to be slave because they are reacting to information from the master, which in this case is the laptop. Now, once we've dropped those four fixtures in there, that is our light show ready to go. Of course, that's a very short light show. We're not using many lights here. It's just four today, but you can you know, load them in. It really doesn't take you that long. Now, we'll head out of the DMX section. So once we've addressed all our fixtures in and we're sure they're working and they're ready to go, the next stage is to set the positions of your moving heads. Now, to the left-hand side here, you can see a nice little section here labeled position. Now, if I double click on this, it comes up with a little dot and all our moving fixtures are based here. Now, if I click on that dot and we move it, we can see that that fixture moves accordingly. Now, this position it's looking for is stage left. So in this example, I'm gonna go all the way over there we're going to make it come up a little bit, and there we go, oh, I'm happy with that being stage left. I'll take my other fixture, and I'll do the exact same, I'll make it point to stage left, put it as close to that as I can, there we go, perfect. Then we'll click on stage right, and you do that again. Now, you do that for all the positions listed, we've got stage right, stage left, dance floor centre, DJ booth, crossed over, up, down, stage center, disco ball, which is a vital one. If you guys are the guys out there that are using old school disco balls, you want your fixtures to be able to point at it and get the most out of your disco ball being there. So you set all of these fixtures and they're ready to go. Now, in this case, I'm gonna switch over to my NAJ venue because I've already set up all the positions over here. It was a, a preset that I used for the NADJ meeting. Be sure to check out those guys for anyone based in Essex or anywhere else in the UK. Got some great benefits down there, and you can join their club and go to all sorts of meetings and have boring bar souls like me come talk to you about products and show you how stuff's done. And, and, and you know, it's a great way to get in with other DJs. But once we've set those positions, it's ready to go. Now, of course, it's auto analyzed the show, so it, it's ready to go there, and that's playing away. Uh, in time to our music. However, maybe I want to make some changes. Maybe I don't like what that light's doing. I can zoom in using the pinch and grab feature in Mac. And I can see at the bottom here, we've got our waveform and our corresponding beat grid. Now, perhaps on this slimline RGB one, I want it to strobe just before the drop for three bars. I simply highlight that section and at the top here, I click on strobe and I can set the percentage, whether it's an increaser or just a static strobe. And we can apply that in and now, when I get to that section, we can see that light has started strobing. Now, maybe I want to do that. Let's get off that so it's not strobing in my face the entire time. Uh, maybe we want to do that on all the lights and all the fixtures so I can head to what's called the master track. 
which is this one right on the bottom. And anything we apply to the master track is going to be applied to all the lights across the board. Maybe I'll do the same. We'll hit strobe and we'll do it a, a 60 to 90% increase. And now, once I go back to this spot, you can see that all the lights are strobing up to the drop and in it comes. Now, at the moment, you can't hear the audio particularly we're clear because we're only doing a screen recording and that's all inside a sound switch, but you'll get a better idea and you'll be able to hear properly once we have a look with the controller and running it in conjunction with Serato. Now, using that very same technique that we just looked at, we can do the same with color transitions, color, just static colors, um, movements, and various different parameters inside these lights. And we can really get to the nitty gritty of how my lights are working. Now once we've set up our shows, we've analysed whether you want to just analyse everything and let it do its own thing, or if you want it to program every song individually, whatever you might, whatever works for you, once you've done that, it's time to move into what we call performance mode. Now, in performance mode, to do so, I simply click on, I'm going to click on the save button, so we, we've got that saved, nice, and we're going to click on file, and I'm going to click on switch mode. Now, I'm greeted with this edit or perform section. Now I can click on perform and it asks me to select a venue. Now the great thing about having different venues is that I might have a small setup that I take out to most rigs. I can have that set up. I might have a big setup that I take out to bigger venues. I might have um, I might have a residency at a certain club and I know that they have their lights set up in a certain way. I can r create a venue for that and bring, bring it back as many times as I want and add to it if I need be. I'm gonna click on NAJ and we can see that the lights reset there and went into the position. Now I'm gonna open up Serato, my trusty DJ software, and we're going to see how she works in conjunction with a controller. Now today we're using the SB3 because it was nice and easy to plug her in and away she goes, but of course you can use any, any controller that works with Serato, any controller that works with Traktor, any controller that works with any DJ software with Ableton Link. You can also use the Prime series. I know I mentioned it earlier, but we'd like to reiterate that because you're running this with a Prime setup. If you're using a standalone setup, you've got your laptop to do your lights, you've got your full standalone system and you're running that and it's gonna create all your shows for you. Now I'm gonna head over to my create, crate, not create. I'm going to load in my track and I'll load in a second track on this side. Now you'll notice that the lights have set themselves. So if I press play on a track, you can see the movement has already begun. And as I bring the volume up, the brightness of the light comes in and we've now got the lights running. If I have another track playing on the other side, we can see that as I bring down the volume of that track and the volume of the other track up, we get the brightness of the light to correspond with that. Now, when we've got a track playing over here, we'll switch to the other side and it goes to the lights for that movement. Pause that for a sec now. So what that means is that every movement inside your DJ software, every transition is gonna be corresponded by those lights. Perhaps we've got a hot cue section. So let's say I'm playing a track, turn it down a little bit on the master. And I've set a hot cue, we'll skip forward and we'll set another one. And you can see as I jump between the hot cues, not that there's much difference between those sections because they're in the same theme and the same section, but you can see that it goes to the point that the light show is set at that point in the track. Now, when you're using things like the Denim Prime, and the SE5000 and using features like roll. Because when you go into a roll, whatever rate you're rolling that up, you're repeating that sound, the lights are gonna strobe to that pan. There's a really great way of having those kind of cohesively synced together. We've spoke about what SoundSwitch is. We've had a little look at the software. I think it'll be more than fair now to just run a couple of the lights and just have a little look and just see how they run. We'll be listening to a track from up and coming artists called Next. Um, he's probably not going to like me calling it, but at the moment it's called Shotgun. You never know what they turn up to, sometimes it has a name change. And you'll find this on YouTube, SoundCloud, all that um, in the months to come. But for now, you'll get a nice little sneak peek and we'll run the light show and we'll, we'll see how it looks. Now 
Now we've looked at the light show, we've seen how it runs, we've seen how it does. You've got an idea of how, how SoundSwitch can really benefit your lighting system. As always, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, chuck us a comment in the comment section and be sure to subscribe. As always, get in the mix.